Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Timeless Truths from the Bible. We're now on the subject of God, and the first episode is, Does the God of the Bible Exist? Primary question. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 10 and 11, here's what it says. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. Isaiah 43, 10 and 11. That's the claim of the Bible. Within the pages of the Bible, there are claims that God has spoken to humanity. In fact, over 3,000 times in the Old Testament alone, there are phrases such as God spoke and the Lord said, or the word of the Lord came unto so-and-so. The men who wrote the books of the Old and New Testament believe that God exists, that he has clearly revealed himself to the world. And the Bible is the re record of that revelation, is a record and the only record of that revelation. But the claim that God exists does not in and of itself make it true, does it? No, how do we know that God exists? Couldn't the idea of God be some kind of wish fulfillment on our part? Maybe God is only a mental projection, something which merely exists in our minds. Now, if there is a God, as the Bible affirms, then what is he like? In other words, how does a person know that this God who exists is the same one that the Bible reveals? Fair question. Put another way, how does the Christian know that their God exists? What reasons are there to believe in the God of the Bible? Now, this entire book we've written on the subject of God found on our website, Educating Our World, under the heading of God, of course, will answer questions concerning the evidence for God's existence. So, the question we're going to look at today on our timeless truths from the Bible is, does the Bible attempt to prove that the God of Scripture actually exists? And the answer is no, it does not. In the Bible, there's no attempt at all to prove that the God of Scripture exists. Not at all. From the first page of the Bible until the last, the existence of the God of Scripture is assumed. Everyone is aware that he exists. From an examination of Scripture, we can discover a number of things about the existence of the God of the Bible, and they include the following. First, the Bible offers no proof of the existence of the God it reveals. Fascinating, isn't it? We again emphasize that nowhere in the Bible that there are arguments that seek to prove God's existence. We don't find them anywhere. The fact of his existence is assumed from the very first page of Scripture, where we read the following in Genesis 1.1, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The existence of the God of Scripture is implicit throughout the rest of the Bible. The Bible assumes the fact of God's existence and calls upon people to make a step of faith towards him. We read the following in the book of Hebrews about the necessity of faith when it comes to believing in the existence of God. It says in Hebrews 11, 6, But without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Hebrews eleven six. Now, since the God of the Bible is invisible to humanity, we can only know that he exists by means of faith, right? In fact, this passage in Hebrews emphasizes that it is impossible to know God or even to please God, except by means of faith. While you and I cannot see him, we can know through faith that he indeed does exist. Now, as we have said, there is no attempt to prove that he exists. The closest thing in scripture uh, to attempting to prove God's existence is a statement of the Lord recorded in Malachi. It says the following, bring all the tithes and storehouse, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord Almighty, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Let me prove it to you. That's Malachi 3.10 from the New Living Translation. However, this statement does not attempt to prove God's existence. What is proven in this context is the fact that the Lord is faithful to his promises. Now, the existence of God is evident to all as our next heading. There is no attempt to prove that God exists because Scripture says that his existence is evident to everyone. Paul wrote to the Romans and stated it this way, God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all godlessness and unrighteousness of people who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth, since what can be known about God is evident among those because God has shown it to them. From the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, 
being understood through what he has made. That's Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 20. Now, God has made known his existence. He's made it evident to all of us. In this sense, every created thing that's there in the universe gives evidence to God's existence. If a person denies the existence of God, then there is no reference point to correctly understand themselves or the world around them. They're without any hope. In fact, as we've said many times, the design that we see in our world, either microscopically or telescopically, shows order, wisdom, and purpose in the universe. And of course, that speaks of a creator, doesn't it? All right. Now, the next point is only a fool denies that the God of Scripture uh, doesn't exist. In other words, a fool denies that he does, that God doesn't exist. Um, not only does the Bible assume that God does exist, only a fool denies his existence. The psalmist wrote the following, fools say in their heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They commit abominable acts. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. They have all fallen away. They are all alike perverse. There is no one who does good. No, not one. At Psalm chapter 53, verses 1 to 3. Only a foolish person would deny that God exists. The fact of his existence, according to scripture, is obvious or should be obvious to all. Now, those who do reject the truth of God's existence usually end up in some sort of idolatry. They worship aspects of the creation rather than the creator itself, which is very popular, of course, in our day. The Apostle Paul described these people in his letter to the Romans. Here's what he said. For God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all, un against all godlessness and unrighteousness of people who, by their unrighteousness, suppress the truth. For though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became nonsense, and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, birds, four-footed animals, and reptiles. That's Romans chapter 1, verse 18 and verses 21 to 23. So the idea behind this is if a person does reject the idea of the worship of the God of the Bible, then they will turn to worshiping other things that have no real worth. As human beings, it's often been noticed we, we have this desire, this need to worship something, something greater than ourselves. A lot of people end up worshiping themselves. And so when you reject the worship of the God of the Bible, you have to have something to fill in the blank there. And this is what Paul is talking about to the Romans. Now, our next point is there is no excuse for denying God's existence. Ultimately, those who do indeed deny God's existence have no real excuse for what they are doing. When Paul wrote to the Romans, he said, unbelievers have no excuse for denying the existence of God. Here's what he said in Romans 1.20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. Romans chapter 1 and verse 20. So the existence of God should be clear to everyone, and God's not going to accept any excuse from unbelievers about their ignorance. Indeed, there is no excuse. Uh, the psalmist wrote that the wicked live as though God is dead. He put it this way, for they brag about their evil desires. They praise the greedy and curse the Lord. These wicked people are too proud to seek God. They seem to think that God is dead. Psalm chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. While they know that he exists, this is interesting in this context, they live as though that he does not exist. In other words, they know he exists somewhere in their heart, but they live as though he does not exist. And again, they're without any excuse, as well as without any hope. So the bottom line is this. Only the Bible reveals the true God who exists. The main interest in Scripture is, show that, is to show us that the God of the Bible is the only God who exists. In the ancient world, it seems that everyone believed in some type of God. Atheism, which is interesting, was not really an issue at that particular time in history. The question, therefore, was always this. Which God or gods exist? This is the issue in which the Bible addresses itself. The God of the Bible is contrasted to the false idols and powers which were, people were worshiping at that time. He is the only God who exists. Now, there's certainly sufficient evidence, and we've talked about it time after time here, about the existence of God as how he's proved it by many ways. We talk about this in the, the life of Jesus Christ, three signs, the miracles he performed, the prophecies he fulfilled, and coming back from the dead, evidence, 
and evidence like we've seen from our subject of our books on Bible prophecy, evidence of fulfilled prophecy in the past, evidence of fulfilled prophecy today that no human being can know. So there's evidence there. But what's interesting about the Bible itself, it just assumes God exists. We all should know that because the evidence is there all around us. Like we said, when we look at the created universe, we see design, we see intelligence, and that intelligence is revealed in Scripture as the God of the Bible. All right, I'm Don Stewart. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Timeless Truths in the Bible. We'll be back next time with another one on the subject of God. Until then, as always, may the Lord richly, richly bless you.